Okay, um, so today uh, we wanted to talk about RBAC with OAuth and specifically how to use scopes to control access to APIs based on a person's role. So the um, agenda is basically to do a little bit of show a couple of slides and give a quick overview to do a live demo and then to save some time at the end for, for Q&A. So I'd like to start by just saying that, that RBAC is still useful. There, you might have heard of ABAC and other contextual security strategies for controlling access to resources. But RBAC is what we call deterministic, which means that if you're auditing, you can go back in time and say, did this user have access to this resource at this time? So for that reason, it's, it's still very useful for enterprise governance. The um, tool that I want to talk about today for, for implementing RBAC is the Glue Gateway. This is, this is our basically our fancy web proxy that we use to control access to API and web resources. It's built on top of Kong 2.0 Community Edition. We've written our own plugins for OAuth, UMA, and OPA. OPA is the open policy agent. It's an external um, policy decision point. And it's distributed via um, packages and uh, Linux containers. So like the Glue server, Glue Gateway is not just one piece of software, but several pieces of software integrated together. And that includes the a GUI to ease configuration, um, the, the Kong Community Edition, um, the database, um, client software, and, and other things that we need to make the, the, the Glue Gateway. So really, you could think of Glue Gateway as sort of a distribution of open source projects that create this API web um, gateway product. So I want to start with sort of an overview of, of how this all works. So in, if you're thinking about APIs, on the left side, we have clients. and the right side, we have the API. And in the middle, we have the, the proxy um, or the glue gateway. And a gateway, you could think of it as a fancy web proxy with plugins. And the plugins enable you to filter the request and filter the response. And the plugins are run in order. So if you have 10 plugins, you give each plugin a, an integer value. And when the, when the gateway gets a request, it runs the plugins in order. When it gets a response, it runs the plugins in order. Um, but really, it's, it's the plugins you know, plus the proxying that, that make the API gateway. And what was nice about this architecture is that at Glue, we didn't want to invent a whole new API gateway platform. And there's lots of great plugins available that do things like rate limiting and um, enforce the size of, um, of the request. And there's a lot of great security plugins, um, data collection plugins, for example. What we really wanted to do was to write some some plugins that enabled us to enforce security um, the way you know that aligned with our vision. And when you think about it, um, a client um, calls an API and presents an access token. And this access token can be either a reference token or a value token. If it's a reference token, it's normally a long, unguessable string. I just threw in some random digits here. If it's a value token, it's a JWT. And the first thing the Glue Gateway plugin um, does is it looks at this value and says, do I know this value? Is it in my cache? Um, if it's in the cache, then it's already known, and, and, and we can save a little a step here. If it's not cached, then what we want to do is call the introspection endpoint you know, to the glue gateway. This string is just a random string. It needs to know what's the JSON equivalent of this string. So in the glue server, which is the OAuth authorization server, 
there's an there's an access token introspection endpoint that allows you to trade an access to a reference token for the JSON equivalent. And so the gateway calls the introspection endpoint um, with this with this um, ac reference token and gets back a a JSON that provides information about the token. This is this is non-normative, you know, um, values. But basically, the mo it's important to know: is this token active? What client was this token issued to? What scopes or extent of access is associated with this access token? When does the token expire? And there's some more information in there, like the issuer issued at. Um, and potentially custom claims. You can stuff a lot of information in the access token, but this is just sort of the, these are really the most important like four things we need to know um, about, about the token. So, and by the way, if the access token is sent as a value token, then we don't have to introspect it and the glue gateway can just validate the signature and cache it. So it, it's similar, um, but it saves a round trip if you use the, the value tokens. Okay, so now we know who this token is, or we know, sorry, which client this token was issued to, and we're ready for the next step. So in the next step, what, what, the, what the plugin does is it says, okay, so you wanna get to an API. Do you have the right scopes to get to that API? If you have the right scopes, then you're good to go and we can proxy your request. And if you don't have the right scopes, then you're unauthorized. Um, and so that's sort of it in a in a nutshell. Um, so in the in the in the webinar today, I wrote a quick um, demo application to to test this use case. And the I just want to introduce the servers that I'm using in my topology, so you'll you'll know what they are. Um, I have basically set up three servers. Uh, my laptop, I have running my sample application, and that's providing both the website that I'll show you and the API. I have a VM that's set up with a Glue server, and I have a VM set up with Glue, Glue Gateway. So the idea in the demo is that um, a person using a browser will log into the website, and then they're gonna click on something in the website that's gonna call an API. And what I'm trying to show is, is that if the person is a manager, they'll be able to do a post operation. And if they're a user, then they'll only be able to do a get operation. So basically, managers have write access, and normal users only have read access. So this is sort of the, the idea of, of the demo. So let's go into the, the live demo part. Um, and by the way, the GitHub project um, is, is shared and you can use this um, URL, um, um, glue.co slash webinar dash rback dash OAuth. And so all the code that I'm, I'm showing you will be available. So let me switch out of my um, browser. Um, and first, let me show you um, the, um, um, first let me show you the, the people, the test users, so you can understand what roles they have. So Mike is, is our first test user. And you can see Mike has, so this user permission in LDAP or in the database, that's that um, is role. So the role, um, Mike's role is manager. Um, I have another user. Um, oops, um, I have another user, um, Bob. And um, Bob's role is user. So, um, so I'm going to show you. Basically, I'm going to log in as both users, and we'll show how access differs between the users. Um, while I'm in the Glue server, let me show you. Um, so the question is: is how do we go from a user claim, you know, or in SAML jargon, a user attribute, to an OAuth scope? 
um, because in the glue gateway, we're going to filter based on scopes. If a person has the right scope, we're going to give them access to the API. So in, in the glue server, um, we have these things called interception scripts. And these interception scripts enable you to um, adjust the behavior of the glue server um, to your needs. And one of the scripts we have is called the introspection interception script. And this allows you to change the behavior of um, what happens during um, introspection. Actually, I'm going to show you in my um, um, code browser. It's a little easier to see. Um, so in, in the script, basically, what I'm doing is saying that when we get a token, um, what we want to do is look up the user who's associated with that token. Um, we can do that by, um, we can sort of work back backwards from the grant object. Um, the access token is associated with a grant. And, and from that grant, um, we can get the user. And then once we have the user, um, we can get the role of the user. And then once we have the role of the user, I just have a little bit of Boolean logic down here that says, if the role is manager, then add a scope called manager. And if the role um, is user, then add a, add a scope called user. So this is sort of converting our, our roles to scopes. I think that's all we need to show in the glue server. Um, right now. So let me show next the glue gateway configuration. So remember, glue gateway is going to proxy this request. Um, so there's a couple of steps you need to do when you're setting up the glue gateway. Um, the, the first step actually is handled automatically in my program. So um, if you think about that diagram, the client, we, we need to know who is this client? Let me go back to the diagram. So the client um, is presenting an access token. And we need to know who is this client. In Kong jargon, a client is a consumer. And so what we want to do is make a mapping between an OAuth client and a Kong consumer. Um, the way that we do that is by mapping the client ID to a consumer name. Um, in in the in the API gateway, um, it's really quite simple. Um, actually, this is handled done automatically in my program, um, but I'll show you in the GUI what it looks like. Is you can see we have a a Kong um, a name for the for the for the consumer, and then we have the associated client ID. This is the glue client ID for this client. Um, and we're able to use this because we know when we see an access token, we know what the client ID is associated with that access token. So we know, therefore, who is the client who's making this request. So that's sort of step one, is do the mapping between the client and the Kong consumer. Um, um, step number two, we have to start defining our, um, our API. Um, so I have a very simple API. I can show you the code for the API. Um, and so I'm running this framework called the Bottle Framework. It's a very simple Python framework. It runs on port 8081. And I have two endpoints. I, or really, I only have one endpoint. I have the org endpoint. And you can post to that endpoint. And you can do a get on that endpoint. And the code is really very simple. Um, the code, um, um, it always returns success. Um, so we're, we're just testing to see if we're able to call these APIs. It's really a dummy API. Um, but what I do in the code is I want to extract the role, because um, my application might need to know the role of the person too. So we extract the role um, from the scope header. Um, and we just return. So these are just two simple APIs and running on port 8081. So I need to map this um, in, in the Kong gateway. So the first thing in, in Kong you need to do is define what's called a service. Um, a service just defines the basic HTTP stuff. 
So I give the service a name. That's the name of my laptop. Um, that's the host name. That's the port. Um, this is retries and timeouts, you know, just basic stuff you need. Actually, my laptop, um, this API is running only HTTP, so I specify the protocol here too. Um, so that's step one is to find the service. Now, from the service, we can add routes. Um, and I've added one route. Um, so in the route, this is the basically how the, the client will call this API because the client doesn't know about the backend URL. The client only knows about the, the URL that it's calling on the gateway. So this is the route um, in the gateway. It's going to go through um, uh, basically the root of the server and will accept HTTP or HTTPS to, um, to the gateway. Um, and um, the last part is how do we control access in the, um, uh, in the Glue server? So once you've added the route, you can add plugins. And we have plugins, as I mentioned, for OAuth, UMA, and OPA. Um, in this case, I added the OAuth plugin. And I can show you, let me make it a little bigger, how this is configured. Um, so um, basically, I've defined an endpoint slash org. And this double question mark basically says it's a wildcard. So I'm going to. Um, look for anything that's in, in the org um, um, endpoint. And note, you can use regular expressions here too. If you have a specific URL pattern, um, we have some wildcard syntax, and then we, we also allow the use of regular expressions. So you can get, get pretty granular in describing your URL patterns. Um, but what I'm saying here is that um, in order to proxy this request to org, if it's a GET request, um, we need the client needs to prevent present an access token with either the user scope or the manager scope. Um, but if it's a post request, you must have the manager scope. So it, it's a pretty simple uh, filter uh, based on based on scopes, and it's the same URL really. Um, it's just a difference. Um, the main difference is the method. Uh, because you might have the same URL, but based on the method, there might be different policies. For example, post is a write operation and get is a read operation. Um, okay, so I've showed the glue server, I've showed the, um, the glue gateway, and so now it's actually time to show um, the very exciting um, application. Um, let me actually maybe show um, before I show the application, I showed you the API code. Um, there's another, um, I have another um, application running that is the web application that I'm going to show you. And I'll just give you a, a very brief overview of this. Um, the first thing this application does is it dynamically registers a client. Um, and then the next thing it does is it, um, it adds a con consumer. Um, so it, it gets, it knows the client ID, and basically it automatically adds a con consumer. Um, that just saved me from um, from having to do that. Um, and then um, we have a page, the login page. Um, um, so we have a couple of pages here. We have the login page, um, we have the callback page, and we have the call API page. Um, so the login page basically just displays a button that sends you to be OpenID Connect authenticated. The callback you know, receives the code um, from the Glue server, and it trades the code and gets the access token, and then presents you with a little form where you can um, either do a create or a lookup. And then based upon what you do in this form, it actually calls an API. Um, so, um, And this is where. Um, when I call the API, I'm actually calling the glue gateway. And you can see when I call the glue gateway, I'm sending the access token um, as, a, as a reference token uh, in the authorization, just the way you'd send any other, it is an OAuth token, so authorization colon bearer, and then you're giving the, the access token um, reference, reference ID. Um, so that's my pretty simple application. Actually, I've been using this as a sample um, 
open ID application. Um, and so if, if, if it's pretty low level, um, I have a method in here for not only registering the client, but I also um, send the request object. Um, so if you're looking for a, a really simple open ID connect client implementation, you can take a look here. Um, so, okay, let me show this thing now. Um, it's not very exciting. And keep in mind that I'm not a GUI developer, so this will be the worst um, GUI you've ever seen. Um, so here's my login page. Now, I'm already logged into the Glue server, so it's not going to prompt me for a login. I'm logged in as Mike. Um, so when I hit um, login, I'm already logged in, so it's basically just sending me to this form that allows me to test. So remember, create is a post operation, and lookup is a get operation. Now, uh, Mike is a, is a manager, so I should be able to do both of these operations. So let me try the, the post operation. Um, so that was successful. Um, so we can see status success. Note, um, it, it was able to gather my role um, which is sent in the glue gateway as part of the headers. Um, actually, let me show that really quickly. Um, in the glue gateway, you're, you can send quite a bit of information back to the application in the headers. You could send the whole access token, or you could send individual values of the access token. Um, in this case, um, we sent um, all of the scope values um, as, as one um, claim called X authenticated scope. And you can actually see um, in, in the API code, um, I grab this, this scope information, this scope header um, in the request, and I parse it out for the, um, for the roles, which is how I got that. Um, but it's a nice feature because um, sometimes the central glue server might have a lot of interesting information about the, um, uh, about the user uh, that could be shared with the application. So let's go back to login um, and let's try the other op. Um, so now let's try lookup. So this is, I should be able to do this too because manager is allowed to do both get and post. So, um, and this, this is successful too. So this is giving me role equals manager. So, okay. So that, that's the good case, but let's let's try and make sure that our gateway is actually working. Um, let's go to the Glue server and let's log out. Okay, so now I'm logged out. Um, so if I go back to the, the login page, um, and then this time I'm gonna log in as Bob. So it's uh, redirected me to the login page. Let me put in Bob's password. Um, okay, so now I'm getting back to this form. So if I do, I'll do the lookup first. This should be successful because Bob's the user, um, has the user role, and the user role um, should have the ability to uh, do a get. So you can see <clears throat> this is successful. Um, and there's my role, role user, um, and this is my response. Um, so let's go back and let's try the negative case now. So let's say Bob tries to create an organization. This should be blocked. So this is not allowed. Um, it's giving me 403 access denied um, because um, I'm not allowed to post because I don't have um, the manager role. Um, so, um, so that is the very exciting um, demo. Um, I see we have a, a question. Question is, what would have happened without logging in again? Um, well, if I hadn't logged in again, I would have. Um, well, the first step is if you're not logged in, it logs you in. I guess if you tried to make the request um, without being authenticated then you wouldn't have any roles and it wouldn't allow you. So it would be, it would be blocked also um, because it requires an access token um, with, with, the, uh, with the correct scope. Um, so, um, so we're actually like doing pretty well on time. 
um, and uh, any other um, questions um, from the audience. Um, I, I think that's that's it except for my Q&A. So, um, so this webinar, the question is about um, where can you find this in the documentation? And um, so this webinar is actually going to be published. We have a new, um, um, We'll have a new section in the website. We we have the, the last webinar we did a couple of weeks back will be up there. And um, that was a general intro. Um, the GitHub URL um, um, is um, I posted that before, um, but let me let me I'll put it in the chat also. Um, so this is currently in, in my um, in my GitHub. Um, but we're going to move it to um, um, to glues. Um, actually, it's this one. Um, and um, um, so it, it is kind of a nice demo. Um, so you can watch the webinar again later, and um, um, and then you can take a look at the code. So more questions. So. Without re-authenticating, would we be using the old but valid JWT token? Um, so the client is responsible for sending um, the right token when it makes the request. So an, ac an access token is a bearer token. So if a client had an old token and it sent it, you're trusting the client to do the right thing to, there. Um, so um, the reason that we got re-authenticated is because I logged out. When you hit log in, um, it, it sends the authorization request to the glue server, gets the code, and then gets the tokens. What about scale and client session transfer? So um, one thing I should point out about um, the glue gateway is that um, it is actually stateless, um, which means that, um, where's my cache picture? So um, when 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 the um, when we write a session to the cache, that's actually written to memory, um, and um, so hypothetically, if you were to get an access token on a different glue gateway in the cluster, and it didn't know the token, it might re-introspect that token, even though another glue gateway in a different node might know that token. Um, we did this for deployment simplicity, so there's no dependency to an external cache. Um, each glue server is basically like um, autonomous and has no dependencies. So it makes it easier to scale. Um, but it, it might result in an extra introspection or an ex extra validation of the token, but we thought that was a good trade-off um, for simplicity. Um, OK. Well, we're trying to keep it um, short. Um, I'll take this one last question. Is it possible to automatically match clients and con consumers? Well, that's that's basically what's happening here. Um, is that um, in the in the the glue gateway um, um, in the consumer configuration, you're making that mapping between the consumer and the client ID. Um, and this can be automated. And in fact, I, I did automate it in, in the program. So um, when after I do dynamic client registration, I get back a new client ID. And I need to tell um, Kong um, that basically this consumer is mapped to this uh, client ID. Um, there's lots of other plugins that need the consumer. Um, so for example, if you're rate limiting, um, the rate limiting plugin um, rate limits based on the consumer. So this consumer can get this many requests per day or per hour or per month. So if you want to control transaction value, you will need to have this ha this consumer handle. Um, so so we've got to stay within um, Kong's sort of um, entity model. And the um, um, the thing that we didn't want is Kong actually enables several different types of client authentication that we don't really want. So we didn't want to use basic authentication for clients. We didn't want to use um, 
um, API key, static API keys, and 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 secret. Um, so we said really like we glue is good at identifying uh, clients using client authentication, OAuth client authentication. So we really just said that's all we want to use. Um, so question from um, Gustavo: um, Are there are the um, code pieces, um, the configuration available? Um, actually, um, um, I didn't post it there. Um, actually, I could look up the um, when you um, use the GUI. There's a log that shows all the equivalent API commands that you could have used because the GUI is just to make things easier for humans. Um, but really, Kong, everything that's done in the GUI could be done by um, APIs, and the GUI actually logs all of the um, all the equivalent API commands that you could have made if you were if you're actually um, um, doing it um, through through the scripts through the scripting interface. Um, um, I'll I'll look to add that. Um, I'll, um, um, we're actually um, going to. Um, to move this to to the glue GitHub, and that's the reason I gave the uh, the glue.co URL and not the direct um, GitHub to my GitHub. But um, we'll we'll add that in there too. So I'll take this one last question, and and then I want to give everyone back um, their time. Can you build entitlements in a JWT claim? So, um, um, you know, in the introspection script that I showed you, you can add, you can not only append claims in there, you can also add new claims. And those, uh, those claims can be used for policy either in your application or another useful pattern, which we'll perhaps show in a different um, uh, demo on a different day, would be how to use OPA. Um, because what OPA can do is you can send both the access token in and also potentially the request body to OPA. OPA can then evaluate that against its policies. And so uh, potentially you can send quite a lot of information that can be used for policy decision by using the access token. And so it, it, it is a useful pattern. And, um, and so scopes is the, is, sort of the primary mechanism for controlling access. So you can say scope really means extent of access. Um, but if you want a richer, more declarative policy description language, um, OPA introduces this um, um, syntax called rego, R-E-G-O. And in that, you can make really complicated policies about what combination of scopes or other information uh, and maybe entitlement information that you put in that uh, claim in that in that access token. Um, what what are the, what's the combination of the of that data that's required uh, for access? So, okay. Well, thank you all for joining. Um, sorry about the um, slow start of the first couple of minutes. It's a, a new platform, but we're getting used to it. And um, please uh, um, kick the tires. Um, post on support.glue.org if you um, if you have any questions. And thank you so much for joining.